Hey everyone, happy Thursday, February 23rd. It's about 12.30 on the West Coast. Uh, it's freezing outside. I know a lot of us on the West Coast are getting hit with this uh, winter storm right now, so make sure you stay uh, warm and stay safe driving out there. Uh, but let's get into this week's market updates. Um, I want to start off with uh, some job news. So uh, we got new unemployment claims today. Uh, those came in at 195,000 new unemployment claims. Uh, expected was 200,000. The reason that's important, like we've talked about before, is this you know, fits the Fed's narrative that if job market's going strong, then they can continue along the path that they're currently on. Uh, but I want to use this as a segue to take a little bit closer look at uh, that BLS jobs report that came out about three weeks ago that really started uh, mortgage rates uh, climbing up. So that number, the headline number we got was there was 517,000 jobs created uh, in January, which was a huge number, about four, I think 400,000 higher than was expected. Um, but, you know, that is seasonally adjusted. Um, so if we look at the non-seasonal adjustment number, it comes in at negative 2.5 million uh, jobs created. And so basically what they do, the way they come up with this math is, you know, where they come up with this increase was they expected there to be 3 million job losses in, in uh, January. So the fact that there was only negative 2.5 means they had 500,000 increases. Um, so there's a little bit of math gymnastics going on uh, when they do these numbers. So take with a grain of salt uh, when you hear these uh, unemployment numbers. And then if we look at uh, the unemployment rate, which was the big number they talked about, uh, it went down from 3.5 to 3.4, um, lowest in about 50 years, uh, you really, really talked about in the media. If you look at the non-seasonal adjustment, so you take out that weird math, you know, it went up to 3.9. So when it, it would have spiked from 3.5 to 3.9. Um, so that's something to keep an, uh, an eye on. You know, like I said, these these reports, um, they're using math. It's not just counting the numbers. So, you know, the, what's really important, though, is the Fed's uh, paying attention to it. So if the Fed is going to use this number, then we have to, you know, go by that because that's what they're using. And that's reality of the situation. Uh, so the next thing we got was purchase apps. Purchase apps were down 18% last week, 41% year over year. So that's how the mortgage industry is going. But as we've talked about when, you know, like last week, I expected these to be down because when mortgage rates go up, um, apps come down. So as we can see here, the, uh, the green line is existing home sales. The blue line is mortgage uh, purchase apps. So when apps go up, existing home sales go up. When apps come down, existing home sales go down. So something to keep an eye on. Um, like we said, you know, when, when we see rates come down, apps will go up and activity will go up. Next thing we got from CoreLogic uh, was their rent and inflation numbers. Uh, Year over year uh, in December uh, was up 6.4%. Uh, that's actually down from 7.5% in November. And the reason that's important, like we've talked about before, is shelter costs in the CPI numbers. Uh, this That number um, backs up the apartment list number, showing it coming down, whereas the shelter costs in the CPI still shows it going up. We're hopeful coming up here with this next report for CPI. We're going to start to see that shift. Uh, but right now, that's just one more number to make us feel a little more confident that this number is really lagging. And when it does catch up, we should still see we should see some improvement in, in that inflation data and therefore mortgage rates. Next thing we got from CoreLogic was loan performance, and that's still going really strong. Um, the reason, you know, basically what they're tracking here is how good people are uh, paying their mortgages. Um, so across the board, 30 day, uh, 60 to 90 day, 90 day plus and foreclosures are all at really, really low numbers. Um, you know, 90 day, what they consider serious delinquency went down uh, in December 2021 at 1.9% to 1.2% in December 2022. And then floor closures went up a little tad bit uh, from 0 0.2 to 0 0.3, but that's still at multi-decade low. So that's good to know because that just means people are, are still paying their mortgages. Um, you know, the job, as long as the job market stays somewhat strong and we don't see a lot of job loss, we should still see these numbers stay pretty low. It might be an uptick if there is some job loss, but that's it's really good to see that it, things are so healthy right now. Next thing we, you know, and then where, where does that leave us? You know, last week we were at about 6.78, according to that uh, lender survey for the average conventional rate across the country. Um, and now we're at 6.82 today. Um, to be honest, I thought this was going to tick above seven. I thought I was going to have to break that bad news to you guys. But we had a couple of good days uh, the last couple of days to bring it down a little bit. Still a lot higher than we want. Uh, we'd like to get down into the low sixes and break across that 5% uh, barrier again. But, you know, for now, um, good to see that we at least hit a ceiling and are on our way back down. Uh, but what really is going to affect that is, you know, tomorrow we're getting inflation data. We're getting the PCE report, which is the Fed's favorite form of inflation data. So if that comes in strong, meaning inflation is coming down, that will be helpful for rates. If that comes in, you know, if inflation comes in higher than expected, if we see it reverse course like CPI did, then maybe we do kick above that seven number. So that's something to keep a close eye on. I, I know I will be. 
Um, and where does that leave us? You know, the Fed continues to talk tough. So basically the Fed, based on all this data that's coming out, um, you know, they have to decide at their next meeting, are they going to increase it by a quarter of a point, uh, their Fed rates, or a half a point? Right now, the markets are pretty locked in at a, at a quarter of a point, which is what we'd prefer. Uh, but something to keep an eye on, and really what's going to make that decision for them is, you know, besides tomorrow's and PCE inflation data, we're going to get BLS jobs data on March 10th. We're going to get CPI uh, inflation data on March 14th. And then their meeting is on March 22nd. So depending on how that jobs report, the CPI data and everything else that comes out in between, depending on how that data comes out, that's how they'll make their decision. So we really want that to come in at only a quarter point. So we really got to hope that this data starts coming in, in our favor in you know, what we want and not what the Fed wants, where the Fed wants it to continue to support their narrative, where we want to support our narrative that you know inflation is getting under control and it's it better for the Fed not to overcook the economy and cause a lot of job loss. So the last thing I wanted to share with you guys, so it's Throwback Thursday TBT. Um, in a prior life, you know, almost 20 years now, I used to play uh, tournament poker professionally. So I play poker, um, you know, and the reason I bring this up is one thing I learned in poker is that, you know, it's a skill game, of course, just like real estate, just like lending. Uh, but there's a lot of things out of our control. And the more you stress out about things out of your control, the worse you're going to play. And just like being a lender, being a real estate agent, or even being a borrower, there's a lot of things out there right now. You know, home prices, interest rates, inflation, job numbers, all these things are out of my control, out of your control. So really what you got to do is you just got to concentrate on things under your control. Make sure you're making the best decisions based on what you know and the data you know. Um, and then go forward like that. We can't get caught up on the things we can't control. We can only do what's best for ourselves, our clients, and, and move forward that way. So that's all I got for you guys today. If uh, you guys have need anything at all, please do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, besides that, I hope you have a great day. And let's hope for some good inflation data tomorrow. And that way I can have some good news for you guys next Thursday. Have a great week, everybody.